Okay. Sit. Good. Notice how the first time I said it, he sat. If he did not sit the first time I told him, I would have just pulled up with a little bit of pressure like that and his butt would hit the ground. And then you release as soon as his butt goes down. You're not jerking or popping or hanging. Just do it exactly like that. His butt will go down and then you release it. Stay is built in to sit. So if you, he's just learning this, he's only been here for 10 days, he's, or 12 days, something like that. Nope. Sit. Good. Notice I didn't, even, I didn't even reward him for sitting that time. We've practiced sit so much now that I don't even have to reward him for sitting anymore. But I will reward him at the end of this little sequence for staying while I walk around him. Good. When he sits like that, make sure you reward straight down like that. He was looking up and he got the reward straight down like that. Uh, if he does not sit the first time that you tell him to sit, and then pull up just with a little bit of pressure like that. His butt will go down and then you release the pressure. Don't pop, jerk, or hang him. Don't be rough. It's supposed to be gentle but firm. Stay is built in to sit. And so he should stay there. He's, of course, he's only been here for a portion of the training program. So he needs to stay there until you actually walk around him both times like this. And so he's much calmer than he was when he first got here, but you're gonna have to keep working on him. And then when we're done, good, another reward. And the release is to pat him on the chest and say, go, now he's free. Down. So we're still teaching him to go down the first time you say it, which of course you're only gonna say it once. And you saw what I did, which was to help him with my left foot. Once he's down there, he's got a great stay, or a pretty good stay, you know, not bad for just a couple of weeks of training here. Um, being such a hyper little dog, and you saw the way I did it, I said down and I helped him down with my left foot at the same moment. Don't say down, wait for him to hesitate, and then do it, do it all in one motion. So it's as you say the word, down. That's why, okay, there's a likelihood that he'll do it the first time you say it, if you practice that way, down. Good, see, he does it with me, and he gets a reward for that, good. But he's not gonna do it with you until you practice like I did for a few days at least. He hasn't done the full training program, so he's just learned these things. Like he could only do this downstay without me helping him for the last couple of days. So it took him almost two weeks to learn that. Just, of course, you always say it only once. Only say the, train, the, the command one time. Um, you never repeat a command. Stay is built into down. So when you say down, he knows it means to stay there until you release him. And we've taught him a very specific way to be released out of a down stay. And that is, he waits till you come back next to him, pat your leg and say, okay. And then you say, sit. And you pat his chest and you say, go. When I practiced calling butter to come, I always do it the same way. Left hand leash, the handle's over my hand, on my wrist. So even though I let go of it, I can't lose him. So it's the best way to have it. The right hand is for the reward. And so if we're out in public like this and I'm walking him and I want him to stop pulling, come, I'll call him back to me. Good, you see how I put my target hand with the treat down on his level? Come, see how he comes to me? Good. Say good the moment you give him the reward, because later on, when you don't have a reward and you just do this, like I'll do it right now without a reward. I've done this enough with him, he'll do it. Come. Good boy, you love him up extra if you don't have a treat, and obviously for you know many times in his life to come, it's not, you're not gonna have a treat, so you need to practice in a way, when you do practice, you have a treat in that target hand, but you need to practice this way, so in an emergency, God forbid, he is actually, you know, off leash on the street or something and you have to call him back to you. He'll come to this always, this, this hand. He doesn't know it's empty. So right now, see how he wants to pull and run over? You don't see it and you don't have to show it, but there's people walking this way and he's very distracted by that. So do you see how I'm handling that? I just did, I kept doing these little taps, little taps and he eventually stopped. The other thing that you can add to that if he's pulling you on a leash is always call him away, come from those distractions. Good, that's another use for the come command. Notice how 
as along with the target and the back and, and you know having the treat in the target like this and a closed hand it's a closed hand it's not a half open hand it's not like that it's closed his nose touches it it opens and you say good as he takes it along with that I'm backing away so a good exercise to do is see how I have the bigger treat in my palm and then I have a smaller treat I'm gonna throw use as, as a distraction go he, go he goes to get that tree here he didn't see me throw it here let's do it again okay so I toss the distraction go come calling back from it good so always back away because it makes the dog run to you and if you practice this way in real life later on if you practice like this your back can be to the wall or something and he'll still race to you because of the way you practice so it's how it's how you practice that matters uh, also with the food with the target he'll think that there's a treat in there and it could save his life someday and you just give him extra praise when you don't have a treat later on um, also always practice calling him away from something else not staring at you that's why I use a distraction like this like a piece of food and then I practice calling him away from it go come see like that good so always practice calling him away from something if there is no distraction and he won't stop looking at you create your own distraction toss a treat and uh, call him away from that and every time you practice like this he gets better and better we're out on the street today because I wanted to do this not in my yard where there's no distractions but just be out here in public with all the distractions that can pop up pop up and you see even with the pulling which he does a lot as you well know just even just after being here for a short period of time you have a way to handle that now but you have to do it the way that I do it and you can't let him pull you around like this you have to stop walk slower or even stop and just make sure that you're managing the leash like that so he stops pulling you everywhere if that is an issue with you which I think it probably is and always drawing him back to you so he's pulling away from you come call him back to you good every every 30 seconds or so that in itself will make the pulling way less because he'll just start learning that he'll start anticipating you're gonna call him back he'll start spending time around you like this instead of pulling to the end of the leash and that will help too so practice your your come command a lot when you're out in public as well